Hi, and Sina and Faye. We thought in each episode I'd talk about a do whatever you said in the comments. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about the diaper do's and don'ts, a guide to proper usage, which I might as I might change the title uh, a bit because it sounds a bit weird because it is in fact by ChatGPT. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, if you have yeah, if if you want your own titles. Uh, then you know just write them in the comments and I will take that if it's something I can talk about oh well that pineapple package is I don't know oh I had this issue with like inventory space again uh, yeah I'll, I'll tell you know, I'll, I'll go through the list of stuff that I've written down um, and uh, I guess in the meanwhile we're trying to figure out maybe what we can still craft here so I can potentially get rid of all of that garbage in these chests here. And it would be great if I could do something else than actually starving. So let's continue cooking some... Great. Let's continue cooking some fish. And perhaps I should throw out some random... Stuff, blue seed, who needs blue seeds? And, uh, you know, I guess I could eat that one. Okay. Um, right, the first one is uh, the first something you, I guess I'll just read, i read it off, and then uh, you'll probably see whether it's a do or I don't. And the first one is you should ask somebody who uh, knows how to diaper somebody and uh, not mess up with diapering yourself. Um, and otherwise you should really learn how to diaper uh, because you're going to have some potential uh, embarrassing leakages. So, you know, as a quick tip, although I did, I did make a video on how to diaper or how to change a diaper or something, you can search on my channel. Um, but the, the short version goes uh, make sure that, you know, when you kind of, when you put the diaper on, you're lying, you're laying on the back side on the, on the part where the tapes are and make sure that, I don't think I can collect or can destroy these stones, I suppose, but make sure, uh, that you, oh, okay, let's just empty out stuff first. Make sure when you're laying on your on the back side of your diaper and you pull it, the front part of the diaper up between your legs, make sure to pull on the sides of the front wing of the diaper to really make sure that the diaper kind of slips right where your legs meet your uh, your your torso, I guess, um, because that's where the the diaper should seal. Uh, and if it doesn't seal there, because you kind of just just pulling the diaper over your legs uh, and it's not really, you know, where the legs meet your body, then uh, it's going to probably leak. And uh, of course, that's not really great. And of course, the tapes should be done uh, halfway, you know, you know, with some tightness to it, but not too tight and stuff. And of course, I think the best experience is to be diapered by somebody else um, and somebody who has experience with diapering. Um, yeah, and it's also, of course, more babyish. Uh, I need some more storage. Uh, I think I should really invest more into taking a look at, like, options for, like... Oh, right, I've got two storage boxes now. That's pretty nice. So let's just... Let's just put one here. And one here. And then dump all of that stuff that is not food in here, I guess. That should help. And this one, and that should be enough, I guess. There's also these. And this one. Okay, now let's go and get this stuff from the island. Uh, so yeah, that's the first one, pineapples. And the next one would be... I guess I should try farming if I can figure out how it works. The next one would be if you are uh, having cloth diapers, make sure you avoid plastics 
wherever you can. The like outer shell of your cloth fiber will have plastic in it because it needs to be waterproof. I guess you could make one from leather potentially, but uh, you know, it's at the very least it needs to be, um, you know, I mean, the less plastic you have, the better it will be because the plastic will retain the smell and it's incredibly difficult to get that smell out again. So the less plastic you have, especially with inserts and stuff, the less smell you will have. So yeah, uh, I would highly recommend that uh, you go with some more like organic stuff. I guess plastics are also organic. Uh, some more, um, more, you know, let's call it living stuff or once lived stuff uh, like cotton or, you know, some bamboo fiber or something. Um, and I'm full again. And yeah, next one. Next one is uh, don't wash your cloth fibers with detergents if you do not know exactly what the ingredients exactly do in that detergent. Because some ingredients will uh, destroy some fabrics and if your diaper uses that, then you're kind of out of luck and your diaper will probably get, uh, you know, might get destroyed or uh, at the very least will not last very long. So I, what I recommend is use sodium carbonate, uh, which is like this washing soda thingy and citric acid. Um, take two parts of the sodium carbonate and one part of citric acid. These come in, basically these are some kind of powder and just put them, you know, wash your stuff with this. Um, just, you know, just test out how much you need for your clothes to really get clean, uh, which of course highly depends on how dirty they are when you put them in. Um, and that for me works very well. And uh, it's a very kind of non-toxic version to wash your clothes. And you don't need to uh, pay money to one of these detergent companies that are putting all sorts of crap in there. Uh, actually, uh, it's even cheaper. So, um, so it's 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 it costs less. It's easier to to manage, and uh, it's kind of you know better for your skin and blah blah blah. So I think it's really worth a consideration. You can eat a coconut. Isn't that a bit hard? You can eat a lot of stuff. Let's go for this. Okay, now let's try to, you know, I guess, I don't know, I mean, let's just dump everything that I have and just try to, everything that doesn't relate to food, let's say. Okay, so next one, uh, when you do a diaper change or when somebody is doing a diaper change, uh, make sure that you air out your diaper area until it's dry, uh, which will help to prevent any kind of skin issues from uh, happening. Because uh, it basically resets the kind of the nice and cozy atmosphere that the bacteria uh, might have. Uh, and uh, you know, you want to keep things in, in check in there. And if you constantly have everything wet down there, of course, then it's not really, you know, it's not going to have the best uh, experience at some point once you have diaper rash. Uh, there's also this uh, nice, oh, yellow flower. Looks almost green. In the tropics, for example, um, you can uh, get a life-threatening condition where you basically, your, your skin kind of rots away uh, while you're still alive, of course. Um, and that happens simply because the humidity in the, the tropic regions are so, is so high that your skin basically can't, it's basically always moist and wet and the bacteria really like it and will eventually tear through your skin layer that protects you. And uh, then you basically just, you know, it's not really healthy as you might imagine. Um, and that's why make sure you have some dryness in between uh, to uh, really yeah, give your skin a break. And if you don't have time let's say, or whatever, uh, maybe you can use your, um, you know, a short kind of burst of uh, hair dryer or something uh, to kind of dry things up there, uh, which I guess might also be quite comfortable. But yeah, other than that, 
Uh, do not use baby powder because you can breathe that stuff in and it's been shown to be not that great. There's uh, certain components in it or were certain components in it that weren't particularly healthy. Uh, but it's not like these components um, need necessarily to be toxic for you to have issues breathing it in. Because, wait, why can I put that? Oh, because I haven't, yeah. Um, so, for example, if you, uh, you know, if you, if you go anywhere and there's dust and you breathe it in, that's not going to be great for your health. So, baby powder... A, with you a regular exposure to it is basically just not really helpful if you are uh, breathing in this kind of artificial dust even if it isn't toxic so I wouldn't recommend baby powder it's also potentially kind of irritating your skin even more um, so I would rather recommend to go for diaper rash cream which is just a more or less waterproof layer on, on your skin uh, which will basically prevent the you know, diaper rash issue by just killing off any kind of bacteria that live there. Of course, that makes your skin kind of not in the best shape because normally there should be lots of like nice bacteria on your skin that will basically make sure that, you know, the uncomfortable bacteria don't get a hand. Um, but with the diaper rash cream, you're basically just taking matters into your own hand and saying, well, uh, we just remove every kind of bit of bacteria in there. And uh, then we don't have this issue. So yeah, so if you if you have some diaper rash issues or you know you are going to have batteries running now, uh, you know you're going to be in a uh, you know longer diaper and you can't change like during a car ride or something, then uh, you know diaper rash cream as a preparation might be a good idea. It also kind of feels very kind of babyish in some sense. Um, uh, besides that, we have. Uh, don't flush diapers down the toilet. <laughs> no idea why people would even consider that, but apparently that's uh, responsible for a variety of clogged pipes. So yeah, not sure how you would do this. And honestly, like, I mean, in terms of size doesn't really make any sense, but apparently some people like to do this because they're too, too lazy to use uh, the trash. I don't know. Uh, besides that, um, I think I've got everything from that island, right? And if that is the case, I will probably stay here for a while and sort out some crafting things and stuff. But first, let's try to get full. But first, let's actually... Let's try to eat and continue on with the list. Uh, you can store your diapers in a diaper pail. And if you don't, if you can't find a diaper pail that actually makes sense, then you just take yourself a trash can that you can seal uh, airtight. So that might be, you know, just needs a lid essentially that can be pressed on. Uh, and then you can just buy some kind of rubbery sealing things and then you have basically an airtight uh, container. Uh, the important part is that if you have like a trash bag then it's very thin and you have like some smell coming out. Um, but if you have like a, a solid piece of plastic like for a you know, trash can then there will no, no smell will come through that and you essentially have your complete airtight uh, container and that's all you really need to store diapers for long periods of time uh, because you know the only problem with that is that the smell is kind of coming out and uh, after kind of the bacteria have done their job at processing uh, everything in a the diaper then the smell will kind of subside and uh, you basically you know you basically uh, I don't know it's kind of a you can put that stuff uh, without people kind of immediately smelling it in like uh, your own trash can outside and uh, then people won't ask questions for example um, but of course that might take uh, might take a while like a month or so for that to happen and um, for like uh, if you're going number two then that might happen uh, you know, might take much longer but yeah um, in terms of uh, you know in terms of uh, hygiene 
if you think about it, you know, it's a it's a container that's sealed, it's airtight, and, you know, I mean, just putting diapers in and out, and, uh, you know, in terms of hygiene, it's basically just a separated system, uh, so, you know, not really too much of a concern. Of course, you can put your diapers directly, can put every single diaper after you change. Uh, in fact, you can change on the trash cans outside, I guess, and put your diaper in these directly, but it's very inconvenient, and of course, some people might see it and uh, ask some embarrassing questions. So yeah, uh, next uh, would be uh, uh, mixing cloth and disposables is a pretty good idea and it provides you with the benefits of both. So at home, for example, you can go for cloth diapers. They are kind of more wadly and more thick and it's difficult to kind of more difficult to walk, um, which makes it, of course, more babyish, which is also a bonus. Um, well, when you go outside, you can use disposables, which are kind of more discreet, but they're more expensive. So, you know, you have like both have uh, advantages and downsides. So I would highly recommend that you, uh, you know, use the advantages of both. And, you know, both cloth and uh, disposable diapers are babyish and both are used for babies these days. So, you know, um, and one last and do, I guess, is for boys, do point it down uh, to assure that there's no leaks. And for sharks, make sure you don't chew on wood. Because that's not bad. It's not, not only bad for my raft, that's also not very tasty. Uh, and that's pretty much all the tips. Uh, here my kind of test uh, announcement of subscribing and join button and blah blah blah. And uh, bye.